Welcome to Everyone Has a Story, and as promised, every week we're going to have a great show. And today my guest is, uh, she's lovely. She's a lovely woman, both inside and out. Uh, she's very, grew up in the artistic world, uh, but I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about her. So without further ado, welcome June Excuse me? Patagrosi. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Everyone Has a Story. Thank you, Marcus. It's so nice to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on my it's show. It's an honor as well, uh, because what I love to do on my show is just to let people know about uh, different cultures, different people, uh, upbringings, morals and values, uh, and, and, and give them an inspirational and motivational to it so they can be inspired. Uh, by all of our guests that comes on. Uh, everyone has a story. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and bred in Brooklyn. Okay. Love the alliteration. And uh, my mom and dad were very hard working people. You know, kind of my dad grew up uh, in Brooklyn as well. And he started AT&T climbing the telephone pole okay. and then kind of worked late at night and, you know, to get his degree so he can, you know, move on up to management. And he ended up managing a bunch of people. And from my dad, I learned that work ethic, you okay. know, that sort of being really hardworking. And, and uh, it was my mother's side of the family that was the more artistic side. Mm -hmm. And my mom sang every day. She was singing, singing, singing. And I thought everybody had a mom who sang yeah. like that. And <laughs> she was the kind of singer where at the family gatherings, people would go, oh, sing, sing. Yes. So she yes. was like one of those. And um, my grandmother, her mother, Mama mm -hmm. Jean, was the one who got me on stage when I was just a little tyke out of diapers. I was three years old and performing, you know, these musicals and dancing with okay. my grandmother. And I thought everybody did that. And I was so surprised to find out later that my friends did not have that opportunity None of your before had that like opportunity? that. <laughs> so that's why I was kind of inspired to do what I do now with kids. Okay. Uh, I was and and, with kids. and, and uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute, okay, which sure. is a child's play. But before we get into that, uh, tell us uh, about the, uh, actually how, because you're from New York, uh -huh. but you're now residing in Chicago, mm -hmm. Illinois. So how was that transition? How did you get over here oh, to boy, Chicago? Oh boy, that's a long, long story. Um, it, I was a dancer by training, mm -hmm. and I, you'd think I'd still be there, right? And mm -hmm. I knew it was very competitive in New York to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had uh, the great fortune of finding Hanya Holm, he was a modern dancer, the same as Martha Graham. If people know dance, they'll know Martha Graham and Agnes DeMille. It was like the old folks that started to bring dancing out into Broadway and, and okay. modern dance uh, was Martha Graham and uh, Hanya was from Germany and was a pioneer literally and had a school out in Colorado, mm -hmm. at Colorado Springs. And I went there every summer to you know study with her and I was actually in one of her pieces you know where she choreographed herself I was so honored to yes. to be with her and I was so dedicated to dance that I decided to just continue to make that my profession and for graduate school her associate Oliver Kostak mm -hmm. said that he would give me a scholarship if okay. I mean he couldn't guarantee that I had audition but oh, you know wow. that there was that so that's how I got to the University of um, of Illinois down in Champaign-Urbana 
so got my master's degree in dance there and as a dancer I uh, loved it down there because there was this very warm community and mm -hmm. and that's what appealed to me because in New York I mean I was going so fast and you know you could, it, the, the pace of life is just brutal there and you know there's so many dancers and you know you right. just now, can't really set yourself apart. Let, let me ask you what kind of what type of dance were you uh, interested oh, in? Oh I was take? majoring in modern okay. dance and choreography and you know uh, there's a whole there's a lot of different forms. Yes. So I took like so many different dance forms to see where I fit in. Mm -hmm. And you know, modern was where I, you know, kind of really kind of felt the most comfortable. I took some ballet and tap and all that stuff in the early times of my life. Now was uh, dance a passion for you or did you, your oh. grandma and parents just kind of oh, push no, you into I, it? I, I was born to dance. Okay, so thank God to dance. It was one of those things where you just, yeah, that's why they, put me up on the stage because I was a mover they turn on the music and I'd spin and spin and spin until I drop and then I'd get up and spin some more you know <laughs> now I took classes with the whirling dervishes so I know how to spin without getting dizzy because okay. I could even because uh, it was it was a it was meditation to me it was actually a very spiritual time mm -hmm. where I was actually communing with a with my God, you know, with okay. God, and and uh, dancing was a way for me. To, it was prayer. It was a way for me to kind of actually be in a meditative state, and 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 I think that's why I needed to get away from New York also, and be in a place like Champaign Urbana, where it was in the middle of the country, and kind of at the time when you're discovering yourself as a young adult, you know, that was a perfect place for me to kind of have some solitude and really figure out who I was, mm -hmm. and. Um, and I found that through teaching too, because that's where I learn more about myself is when I'm teaching it to somebody, because you really have to get it organized so that you could communicate it well. Okay. And um, then you relearn it in so many ways. Okay, so now you went from dance to teaching? Yeah, dance yeah. and creative dramatics and performing arts skills, you know, so, you know, just how to be a performer. Because I, you know, I took some theater when I was down in Champaign and my late husband, Victor, was actually my director. That's another okay. story. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, Everyone has a story. Yeah, that's a, a that's story. a great story, actually. Okay. He, was, he was a fabulous director. Mm -hmm. That's how I fell in love with him. I watched him direct. Okay. And, and, you know, I mean, there was that, you know, connection, obviously. We worked together first. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we got to know each other, I, you know, watched him in the this, this studio and he could pull out things from people that they yes. didn't even know they had inside them. Yes. You know, he was like a very inspirational director. So that's sort of like what he do has done for you, yourself. Because mm -hmm. uh, you started in dance, yeah. then you went to teaching, and now you went to theater. theater. Uh -huh. So now he pulled that out of you and you Well, just the theater part was okay. something. I mean, the acting, because I'd never used words before. I mean, mm -hmm. we did in some of the dance pieces and of course, you you know, when you're doing musicals, you're, you know, you're, but you're more of a dancer and less of an actor. So mm -hmm. he was the one that really got me to be more of an actor, okay. you know, and, and really compared it to dance too. Because, you know, when you're learning a dance, you have to learn the steps. Yes. And when you're learning, you know, a piece, a monologue or something that you have to memorize, it's the same kind of thing. You have to carry, think of it in beats and in sections. Mm -hmm. And then you put it all together and that's how you kind of okay. memorize but it. My, my point was that, you know, we never know where we're headed in life. You know, we start right. off. But the thing is that you start somewhere. Mm -hmm. But when you start somewhere, you never know where that point will take you into your right. life and it just branch out and opens your vision up to a whole different it's a huge world out here yeah. and everybody should know that and everybody should be involved in trying to get involved into something mm -hmm. and so now um, theater yeah uh, which you are so uh, much involved in now um, talk a little bit about that uh, which is uh, it's child's play touring theater mm -hmm. and everything we do is written by children so kids put it on the page and we put it on the stage mm -hmm. except of course when they're putting it on the stage so we have two different it's like having twins so the first part was to get the actors adult actors performing the kids writings but then we immediately were working with the kids at the same time and having mm -hmm. them perform so it's hard to describe because we do both things it's okay. like having but uh, tell us a little bit about the process now the, the kids just actually write they have a coach they have a mentor they uh, correct the, they do the editing, or how was that process? It's, it varies mm -hmm. from child to child uh, and from situation to situation. So if we're just gonna go into a school, we'll do an assembly program first okay. to kick it off. 
And that's where we get kids to think about their ideas. And you know, we demonstrate other children's writings so that they can have inspiration to write. Yes. And they can't just say, oh, I have nothing to write about, because they all do. And we say it starts with you. Yes. It starts with you and your own experiences and your own feelings. It starts with your dreams and your you know, desires and your wishes and, you know, and what you fantasize. So that's what the whole workshop, and no matter what theme we do, mm -hmm. whether it's saving the environment, saving the world, because we're always trying to get them to think positively about their role yes. in society, or helping their family, helping people in their community. So um, we always say it, it's up to you and your own sense of respect okay. of yourself. How, uh, okay, now what is the uh, criteria, I should say? Uh, or you just randomly pick uh, children? Or how is that process? It's, it is kind of random. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it you know, it's open. Uh, it's open okay. to everybody. So we're very inclusive and, you know, we've worked with every single population that you could possibly imagine. Um, and, you know, from, you know, people of different abilities to, you know, all races and all, you know, we're yes. open. We're just open. So with that in mind, there's no criteria. Um, it's just a desire. Okay. So and a, a, a wanting to work. And okay. so when a school will book us, say if a school wants us, they could call us, they could go to our website and you know, ask for information. We'll you know, talk, because we want it to be a two-way street. You know, okay. It's like, what do you want out of this experience? Not just what we can give you. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're creating programs, that's how we approach it. So it's very, very deep and broad because of that, because we've got so many different you know, people asking for different right, things, right, you know. Right. Somebody says this simple thing like, oh, I want to, you know, do something that's in, uh, like, the Wizard of Oz. And we're like, oh, great, you know, we've got that, perf you know, we got that down. And, you know, mm -hmm. and then if we actually use the Wizard of Oz as one of an example when we're teaching one of our classes. Uh, and then if they want to, you know, do something that's more curriculum driven, if it's more science driven or if it's more, um, it just language arts, of course, is where we tie in completely. So we've worked with the schools in all kinds of capacities. Okay. We've done even teacher training with the teachers to get them to feel more comfortable in using theater in their classroom. Are there any uh, scholarships, grants, or anything? Uh, we are having such a hard time getting okay. funded at this Everybody moment. Everybody is, yeah, of course, it's, because um, of this It's economy. been really difficult. Yes. Um, so we're trying to figure out that survival angle right now and reorganizing and regrouping and you know it's kind of um it, it's challenging to say the least mm -hmm. uh and you know there are times when i just feel like i'm gonna have to throw the towel in you know and go i can't do this anymore i'm getting too old for this you know no, no, <laughs> never, never. <laughs> and then i'm like yeah. okay no i gotta think of my dad you know because mm -hmm. my dad was you know he was a, a survivor yes. and World War II, you know, he also was a World War II survivor where yes. he kind of, you know, has that spirit, that fighting spirit. So I have to like think of him whenever I'm ready to throw the towel in. And believe me, there have been many a times <laughs> when I wanted to throw the towel in. <laughs> and it's, you know, you just have to keep your hope up. You know, it's hard to keep the faith sometime. And that's, you know, the, the big challenge. You know, it's really hard to let go. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more of Everyone Has a Story. Here in the United States, over 700,000 men and women are released from prisons and institutions. 67% of those men and women are rearrested, and half of those are even sentenced to more prison time. But this is not the case for our next guest, Mr. Marcus Jones, who just happens to be the producer of this show. Everyone has a story. And this is mine. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, it's a pleasure being here. And um, I also want to thank Can TV for uh, giving me an opportunity, as they do uh, anybody in the community. So tell us a little bit about your, uh, a little of your story growing up and how, uh, how you came to this point where you decided you wanted to start a show. Even when I was little, I always wanted to be somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be a leader. You know, I wanted to be in the limelight. I, I, I just wanted to have it all. I wanted the, the stars. I wanted to shoot for the stars. And so how I came about this is just that uh, determination and hard work and just uh, people encouraging me and, and the drive that I had. And so here I am. So what are some of the things we could look forward to on the show? Oh, uh, we can look for some uh, great guests, mm -hmm. some great guests um, who are uh, coming on, telling their stories. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some very inspirational stories. We have some sad stories. And we're going to have some um, exciting stories. Mm. So, I mean, we're going to touch just about every uh, corner base that can be touched and needs to be touched uh, to help the community and help the families. Why this program and why now at this time? The reason for it now is because uh, the community and the people in the community, they need healing. They need loving. They need uh, to communicate better. They need to be educated. Uh, mm -hmm. A whole numerous uh, a, a number of things. Mm -hmm. And this show is going to bring all that to the people in the community. Welcome back to Everyone Has a Story. Uh, for the parents out there, mm -hmm. and uh, what would you uh, tell them to get their kids inspired to come down to Child's Play or get on the internet and uh, research on yeah. and, and get them involved? Absolutely. If they go to the website, www.cptt.org, uh, there's a uh, send in a story. Mm -hmm. There's a story submission, uh, so they could just send stories randomly. Uh, we're doing a Writing Our World program uh, that's getting kids from around the globe to send in wow. stories. So wow. that's why we call it, wow, wow. you got it. <laughs> if you get it, say wow. <laughs> and it's like, that's perfect. And uh, so that um, is one of our projects, and we're out of that. We're getting the Great Green Adventures of Our Man because we're asking kids to think about what they can do to help solve the you know energy crisis and the you know reduce, reuse, recycle. As you know, it's like yes. reduce, reuse, yes. recycle. The Our Man theme. So we're trying to get kids to think about that, and they could send in stories about that. If they want us to go to their schools. We can go in and do the workshop like I talked about. If um, they want to have us there in residence, we actually have the kids you know, start with brainstorming, develop the characters and the place, and then they get through the problem and the solution. 
and then they'll act out a story themselves. Yes. Um, we did a residency at Greeley School. We had 285 third through fifth graders performing oh, incredible. twice incredible. in their school year. The first one, they did group generated stories because it was um, English was a second language in that school for the most part. There were a lot of you know bilingual kids there, so mm -hmm. we actually integrated that and had okay. a lot of English and Spanish in the performance that they did the first time. And then there were those writers that emerged, you know, the ones that were really, really getting it and really, yes. you know, should be showcased. Mm -hmm. So then we would have theirs the last um, semester, we had them actually performing more of the individual kids, but it was still performed by the, the group. Mm -hmm. So they were, you know, the whole class would perform maybe one, one child story and one. Okay. And then sometimes they would just have the, the class generated story too, so. Great, great. So uh, we only have a few more minutes left. Okay. And in that few minutes, um, is there anything else that you would like to incorporate with the child's play? Well, we would love to get people to volunteer mm -hmm. and to help um, to you know come and take classes we're going to start to offer things at our studio um, you know I don't know if we're going to get to it this fall we'll probably be more in the spring okay. and then we'll have summer camps if they want us to come and do summer camps at their venues or even you know now at the, you know at their school um, you know so if anybody wants to you know contact us and do a shout out for that right. and then um, so the thing is now, just get in contact with you right now, mm -hmm. uh, get, uh, do a little research, get everything situated so they'll be prepared in the springtime? Yes, because okay. uh, to come to our studio, to to the but studio. if they want us at any time, they can call. We're, the fall's still pretty wide open, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Chicago Public Schools, okay. we lost that, you know. There's hard, There's a lot of openings right now, so there's the opportunity, right? Yes, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's what we love. We love giving people opportunities mm -hmm. uh, so they can make the best of them. Uh, where is the studio located? It's 2518 West Armitage Avenue off of the Blue Line. So we're on the Western Stop. Okay. So and it's easy uh, access? Of, yeah. Okay. So it's right down the street, really close. We're right on top of the tracks. Uh, <laughs> so. All right, June. Uh, so I would, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled and happy that you came on our Me show, too. shared your, uh, a little bit of your experience and your knowledge, and of course, uh, the child's play and the wow. Wow, yes. writing our world. <laughs> yes. yes. We have a bunch of different shows that are going to mm -hmm. be uh, out there. The Great Green Adventures of Our Man is a new show that we're doing. Okay. Oh, and we're uh, getting a uh, new set designed by the Harrington Institute. Remember I was mentioning Harrington before? Yes. So that's going to be a new way of working. It's like we just celebrated our 30th anniversary. So it's like the last 30 years was one way of working, and now this next 30 years will be ah. another way of working. <laughs> There'll be somebody else taking my place. <laughs> well, uh, thank you once again, oh, June, thank for you coming on so our show. Much. I it's wish wonderful. you so much success. Thank you. So much success. Well, the, uh, until next time, enjoy your week.
My name is uh, Marcus Jones. I am a self-published author, uh, talk show host, slash producer, and a motivational speaker. This, this idea just popped in my head that I should just do my own talk show. Uh, and it's a broader vision of my autobiography, uh, Everyone Has a Story, This Is Mine. And uh, the title of my sh talk show is called uh, Everyone Has a Story. Uh, coming from the South Side, grew up and raised on the South Side of the city of Chicago. And um, I was uh, raised by a single parent, my mom. And I got involved into the street life. And the street life uh, consists of uh, gangs. I, I joined the gang. I uh, started selling drugs, and most, just mostly important, you know, uh, I wasn't listening to my parents. I wanted to uh, get more recognition from the streets than I was getting already. And so I entered someone's home, which was another drug dealer, to uh, attempt to rob them. But uh, he got the ups on us. He got the ups on us. And uh, I tried to, uh, as, as I was exiting the uh, home, uh, I got shot. And didn't even know I had got shot because uh, I, uh, I had collapsed. And when I tried to get back up, I couldn't. I changed my way of thinking uh, and, and, and that's what I want to do for the youth that's living that street life. Uh, I want to change their way of thinking.